Hello, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar. My name is Yasmin Hamdan. I'm a reporter and Nairobi correspondent at Guiltix Media. Guiltix Media is the leading youthful digital media based in Mombasa and provide various services including media production and media consultancy. Today we are presenting success stories on building cohesion during the COVID-19 pandemic. Individuals who through their organizations have helped address social cohesion among mostly in other privileged communities. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any questions during the presentation, please type them into the question box below. I'll bring them up during the presentation and we will also have questions at the end. Remember this webinar has been brought to you by Search for Women Around Kenya with funding from the European Union. Now, without further ado, we'll turn the time over and, to, and I'll be able to present Asha Jafari. Uh, Asha Jafari is a journalist communication professional. She has contributed to international and local media and in 2014 won the special award of Hala Prize for Development, translator and editor for Clear Water Production and for the Foreign Correspondent Association of East Africa. Asha was born and raised in Kibra and currently managing the award winning initiative, Kibra Food Drive, an initiative she started to provide food for the needy during these times of COVID. She was, she was also supporting, pardon. She was also recently awarded the African Rising Activity, Activ Activist of the Year Award. And we also have Isaac Muticia Mwasa. He's the coordinator at Madare One Stop Youth Center. Isaac is the coordinator at the Madare One Stop Youth Center. He is a recipient of the UN Habitat Scroll of Honor 2018 during COVID-19 period. We have been able to set up 23 hand washing stations in Madare and conducted more than 2.5 million hand washes since April 2020. We have been giving giving out free masks which we got from our partner foundation. We also have been conducting issues concerning GBV, which has been a challenge to many people in the slum areas when schools were closed and we were offering free e-learning classes for children. And lastly, we have Margaret Kamuru, member of the ETCO Kenya. ETCO Kenya is a youth leading nonprofit organization that offers community empowerment services. Through access to community empowerment services, through, pardon, through access to education, sports, development, arts, business innovation for sustainable and employment aiming to curbing sub substance abuse, high crime rate, and reducing poverty. During the COVID-19 period, they have been quite successful in community outreach programs and notably in food and non-food donations, community sensitization programs, sports, and music talent, such among other activities. Our solution are strategically organized into various departments to enable us to attain both short and long-term goals. So we will have sure to introduce yourself for three minutes and tell us more about Kibra Food Drive. So we started the Kibra Food Drive initiative last year, um, a month like this, um, I think the same week also. Um, and we started giving out food to people who had lost uh, their job or sources of, sources of income. Um, last year, um, immediately COVID hit Nairobi. Um, most people were laid off, um, other, like other people, you know, could not um, access ways in which they could sustain their families because of the curfew that was put on. Um, 7 p.m. So this is a major challenge uh, in the slum of Kibera and also like many other slum areas and even like the whole of, of Kenya. 
And for us as the youth of Kibera, we thought that the only way we could serve uh, our community was to actually come up with an initiative that would um, that could actually help um, cushion them um, during that time of COVID. So we were able to fundraise and feed 3,000 families um, or 3,000 households um, in Kibera. And we also gave out masks, sanitary, uh, sanitary, um, sorry, sanitization materials um, like sanitizers, soaps, and uh, other things to help people keep um, keep their hygiene um, on top. Uh, and also, we we had a, like an, a, a group of volunteers. We the food drive was uh, like a very heavy and uh, strenuous work. So we were able to get 20 volunteers from Kibera uh, who were helping us in distributing the food and also packing the food. And we've done that uh, for like one year now. I think this month is our first year anniversary. So um, yeah, that, 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 that's been it um, for us. And maybe now Isaac next in line, you can tell us about Oh, but not it okay. cool. Madara won't stop you at the center. But... Okay. Okay. So um my name's are Isaac and I'm Leticia Mwasa, but I'm known as Kaka. And Kaka means brother here in uh, like uh, uh, like uh, it means brother. And um uh, what we've been doing uh, at the Madara One Stop It Center is uh, when uh, the the, uh, the issue of COVID started, um we went to our partners who are UN Habitat and also um, went out to reach out to like uh, the Norwegian embassy and also the Canadian embassy. So they helped us uh, set up um, 23 hand washing stations, uh, which were located in, uh, uh, in, the, in some of the areas which uh, people were crowded. And um, uh, the stations, actually they were, uh, they ha are having uh, two uh, people who are manning the stations and that way we created employment to the young people so they were being paid by our partners and uh, throughout the pro uh, the hand washing uh, we we did uh, 2.5 hand washes like every time like people will wash their hands especially the kids uh, to try and uh, uh, stay safe we also came up with the idea of um, uh, of uh, e-learning project because um, um, the, the schools were closed and uh, most of the kids they were just roaming around and uh, some of them they were engaging into drug abuse. So we started e-learning project. So we have uh, we, we were bringing uh, like a, a few numbers of kids, like ten kids, and then. Uh, after that, we, we like we, uh, we provide them with e-learning uh, programs, and by doing that, uh, we 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 helped a lot of young people, uh, a lot of kids, sorry, uh, that were just roaming in the street. And lastly, we also did um, uh, gender-based violence because uh, we were seeing cases that were emerging in our community, and um, we saw this this. The violence that was happening, like uh, when the, 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 the men were losing job and the women, like they will, also, they will always quarrel in the house because uh, there was no food. And, and that was a big challenge. So we came in and uh, we, 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 we had a lady who was uh, going door to door, talking to people and, and explaining to them uh, on how they can handle the situation. And uh, also we gave out free masks uh, we partnered with uh, the Wanyama Foundation, so we were giving out free masks to the people in the community, so that you can try and help uh, fight COVID-19. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And maybe lastly, we can have Margaret Kamuru introduce herself from ITCO. Uh, hello, everyone. This is Margaret Kamuru from ITCO, Kenya. Yeah, so what I'll say is that during the COVID season, we, we registered ETCO as a community-based organization. We started with Food Drive that was sponsored by Kenton in, a Facebook, in, the, in, the, in his Facebook page. And uh, during the nine months of Corona season, we gave out food to around 
5,000 families in our high rise and Kibera, parts of Kibera, because tunaishi on this side of Langata, Bodaya Kibra na Langata. And uh, apart from that, to make one activities like football tournaments, theater and acting, street shows, we measure in different kind of areas in environment. Like in the environment, right now we are working with the with the national government about the Nairobi Dam, just to check on what the youths can do during the area for the for issue on employment because during the Corona season, employment has been really an issue to everyone. So we thought of a way on which the young people can be employed and that's why we thought of Nairobi Dam. We also have different activities on our acting theater platform. We've just signed a contract with USASA and we're hoping to be working together together in the Royal Media Services. We also issue out food and non-food donations, e.g. mask, clothes, shoes. We also have an education program where we sponsor five kids from grade one everything that they need to school, basic needs, foods, anything, anything and everything, including the school fees. Okay, one thing about ETCO, most of our activities is sponsored by the members. We, the members, come up together and uh, bring out the, what we have on table and try and help our community. On, on that, there was a lot of help from other people, but I'll say that uh, Kidogo, the PS, the former PS of Youth Affairs, Julius Correll, he has been really supportive. There was a time we held a meeting at the State Department of ICT and Youth Affairs, and uh, we discussed on the activities that we're holding and the government, through the State Department of Youth Affairs, decided that they'll come in in what we're doing and help out in where they can be. Right now, the PS have moved to devolution. But I'll say that Bado, the government, has been very supportive. And we are looking for the best, just working out in the community and bringing out the best, especially right now that Nairobi is under a new lockdown. I believe that food is one thing that will be a challenge to many. And uh, so as HQ, we're just looking for a way that we can partner with other people and other organizations and other sponsors just to help our community. Because it's not about snatching one person from the community. It's about helping the community and putting the place suitable for the 400,000 400, kids that live in the slum. Thank you. Okay, now we'll move to the Q&A session. I'll ask you guys questions and if you just will have one minute to give me that. So we'll start with Asha. How did you come up with the idea of the good drive? Yeah. Having been born and raised in Kibera, um, I think it was it was easy for me to actually assume or make assumptions that um, lockdowns, curfews uh, bring um, a lot of issues like you know poverty and uh, lack of food. And for us, it was because we've seen such such realities. We've lived through such difficult times uh, before, and so like I thought, and some of my friends who are in the team. That this is actually the best way we could have helped our community. Other people are doing the the sanit like um, the hand washing um, stations, which was very good. But for us, our potential, we saw that it was actually giving out food, and that is why I focused mostly on on that. And also because you know, people if people you're telling people to stay in the house and not you know go out to work, that's because you know um, they go to work because they want to get that money and to get that food. And so for us, that was a way of also keeping people in the house and also to stop the spread of COVID um, in a way to also like, you know, help combat the spread of COVID uh, in Kibera because it's a big slam. So if one person gets it, uh, you know, uh, other 10,000 people getting it is so easy um, compared to, you know, other areas where social distancing can be achieved and, uh, you know, uh, you can wash your hands as often as you can. Yeah. Again, maybe Isaac, now you can give the GK come back. Isaac, are you there? Okay, maybe we can have Margaret.
Margaret. Yes, I can hear you. So maybe you can tell me. Maybe you can tell you me. I'm up, I'm up, I'm up, yeah, I'll help. Yeah, I'll help. Yeah, I'll help. Uh, with the issue of lockdown, I'd say that in our community, most of the people that live here, it's hand to mouth job whereby you work to feed, you work to get food, and uh, come come to Corona season when everybody is not of, out, everybody is out of work. Not everyone alikwana something to save to help themselves. So it reached to a time that everyone is in the house, the father, the mother, together with the kids. And you know, us in Kibra and in formal settlements, most families have kids to eight or six kids, or probably their families with ten kids. And now there is lockdown, no more, no more shops, no more work, no, no nothing. So I believe it make a big challenge to everyone living in the slums from my side. Now that's how we came up with Etco and say that, for example, for me, I'm born in Kibra and raised in Kibra. I will not sit down and watch my people die out of hunger. If they can do something, let me do it. If they'll call me a beggar because of my community, then let them do so. But one thing, I'll not sit down and watch my people die out of hunger. Because I believe it's a way that the government probably has not understood it to, uh, to the huge percentage that it is. But the truth, people are dying out of hunger. Because nobody's at, nobody's at work. You don't have a neighbor who probably has something to help you. Everyone is down. So that is how we came up with ETCO and said that let us be fair for our people, let us stand up for our community. Thank you. Uh, and lastly, we can have Isaac. The reason why we started um, uh, the hand washing stations is because uh, in Madare, people uh, are very congested and um, like uh, the spread, we were afraid of uh, the spreading of uh, the virus. So what we, we saw, it was important. It was, uh, we saw that uh, uh, if we put up the hand washing stations in some of the areas where like uh, the marketplace, uh, areas where people are like uh, always gathered in a big number, like we will, we will, we will help fight uh, uh, like the spread of uh, the, the virus. And also the reason why uh, we decided to start uh, the e-learning pro project is because uh, some of the like the kids in the slums they cannot afford like uh, uh, to uh, to like uh, do e-learning uh, programs. But uh, for us, because we had uh, we had found some resources and also we have a center that uh, has a space. Uh, we we used the center and made sure that we have internet in the center. And the kids can can continue uh, learning, continue uh, remembering what they were taught by their teachers before the schools were closed, and also and lastly, um, giving out masks. A lot of people are not wearing masks, and uh, some of them they could not afford every day to buy masks every day. So we came up with ways. Uh, we came up with the idea of uh, giving out free masks, which were like reusable. So we. Uh, we, we made sure that uh, we are reducing the chances uh, of the spread of uh, uh, COVID in our community. Thank you so much, Isaac. So maybe, Asha, you can tell us how were you able to get funding for the drive? Or someone who was giving us money. So what we did is we were using the crowdsourcing platform called Amchanga. Um, it's used for, you know, um, Harambe and things like that. So for me, I used that platform for the whole of last year. Um, because also when COVID came, no one was prepared. Uh, no one, you know, no one knew anything about it or how to, you know, uh, no organizations were formed uh, to kind of like help alleviate the, 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 the issues that were, that were, you know, the, that were happening at that time. So, you know, it was very challenging. Uh, so we had to, you know, uh, start something that everyone can take part in. And so, you know, we said eventually, you know, other NGOs might come up and they will help us um, in the end. But for us, it's raised money using Mchanga and we raised uh, 3.7 million Kenyan shillings that went into feeding the 3,000 families. Okay, Margaret, you can tell us how you were able to get funding for your initiative. 
Margaret. Yes. Okay, thank you so much. From our side, we first started with the members' contribution to start out because we were just looking for a way that we can do this and move forward. And during our programs, we met with well wishers who came through after us sharing the posters, the food drive pictures, the videos, and showing people the mileage that we had gone as ETCO. So it came to us from well wishers, especially from Kenton and our area MP, Nixon Corel. Uh, who was a huge help to us, and that is how we were able to to start our mileage from that end up to where it is today. And lastly, we can have Isaac, who will tell us how he is able to get his funding the initiative. So, um, uh, uh, like, uh, after winning the School of Honor, like the UN Habitat School of Honor, I was able to uh, get a uh, good uh, um, like a partnership with uh, uh, the Norwegian Embassy and also the Canadian Embassy and the uh, UN Habitat. So the Canadian Embassy supported some of the stations and uh, also the uh, Norwegian Embassy also supported uh, like some of the stations and the uh, UN Habitat also su su uh, supported some of the stations. And when I mean supporting, they were paying the people who are manning the stations, and also they were providing us with soap and uh, the containers for like the hand washes, which were uh, like uh, located in different areas. So they uh, they supported us in making sure that we have uh, soap, and then uh, the people who are manning the stations they were paid, and also um uh, like uh, for for the masks, I could say like a. Uh, Victor Wanyama uh, like had donated uh, had donated ten thousand uh, masks to uh, Mazare also in and Kibera also, and uh, that's how we got our fundings and uh, and how how we supported the people in our community. Isaac. Okay, maybe after you can say. Margaret. Uh, I'll say like donation, I'll say that we have received much from probably organizations and the like. But there was a time that we were awarded a prize by the UN for fighting COVID-19 as Echo Kenya because we didn't fight it because we had people on our side or we had sponsors and anything else. It was just members from the community and to be specifically young members from the community, just coming up together and deciding that we just want to do this for our people. We just want to stand out for our people. And right now, I'll say the mileage you've gone with Echo, it's because not only the members, but the community has embraced us in a huge way. And uh, they're just proud of what we've been doing as ETCO, just coming up together, just young people, giving out what they have and standing out for, for their people. That is where we started as ETCO. And we are looking forward for people who can connect us. Right now we have a theater, we have around 100 young people interested in acting and theater filming. and. Uh, what we've been doing is right now we are working so hard to getting a license in a way that we can produce a theater and probably work out in other things and other areas in filming. Maybe you can tell us how the members of the community been supportive of your project. Uh, please pardon the question. And I was asking, have the members of the community shown support towards your initiative? Uh, thank you. The community Imekua very helpful, and I'll say that there was a time we tried acting and we did a film by the name Radam Tani, and the community Imekua embraced that thing in a very big way, in a way that in the day of shooting they were around, 
after shooting the movie, everyone was there watching it on YouTube and everything else. So the community was very supportive, and I believe if these were better times, then to get what to make a very huge mileage. But one thing I'll say is that my community to be specific on Soweto East, Kibera, Langata side, now high rise world, they've been very supportive to Echo Kenya, and they have really helped us to a way that we've come this far. Hey, Asha, moving to Asha now. Asha. Okay, now we can have, can we have, I, okay. It's okay. So Asha, can you hear me? Okay, maybe you can tell us so far, how many people have you reached and have this community been supportive for the initiative? We have been able to give food to 3,000 families um, in Kibera. But also, um, we've partnered with several um, organizations from, you know, from Kibera um, to also like help us. Other people are helping us with bringing masks. Other people are helping us with, you know, providing sanitizers. Others, you know, someone can and say can, can you know say I'm sponsoring um, porridge flour for a month or two months. So that's how we've been functioning. Um, the community has been very receptive uh, because also like how this project started. It started out of nowhere. So people, people, people like could not tell how um, big this thing uh, could be, or how it could go. Like reaching three thousand families is really huge, and it's not just one individual; it's households, and you are giving them food, you know, support them for a whole month. So it was, it was a really uh, big deal, and and I, I appreciate my community because if I didn't feel supported, if I didn't feel part of it, or if I didn't feel the the project was actually beneficial to the community, I would have stopped. But you know, um, up until now, we are still continuing. We are still giving food and you know everything that com the community needs. So it's been good. Okay. Maybe you can roughly tell us how many people have been able to benefit from the program, from the food drive. Households um, have been able to benefit um, from the food drive. Yes. Okay. Now, can we have Isaac to tell us? How many people have benefited from the one stop you? Um, I can say um, a lot of people have benefited. I can say with the hand washes, we are still continuing with the hand washing stations. So, uh, so far, as like I mentioned, we did uh, more than 2.5 uh, million hand washes. And when I mean hand washes, is people repeating. Uh, to wash the hand, same same person washes the the hand, uh, like uh, uh, some uh, a few times. So um, I can say for now we are still continuing with the project, and uh, I can say we we, we are almost uh, reaching about three point two mi million uh, hand washes. And for the kids, um, we were like able to uh, like uh, with the project because the the schools were were opened, so we were able to reach out to 3,000 uh, children who are like uh, uh, benefiting from the e-learning project. And also for the masks, uh, we, we gave out 5,000 masks to the people uh, in, in our community, yeah. Okay, thank you, Isaac. Now we can have Margaret tell us how many people have benefited from it. I'll say that we have had a huge number who have benefited from Echo Kenya. Like, for example, every Saturday we have a feeding program where we host 200 kids every Saturday. We teach them, we cook for them, and we, we connect to them with their parents regarding on the talent that they have. And uh, in our data, everyone that we have, we have reached to probably with food on and food donation, we record them at a Google account. And so far we have more than 5,000 families at an average of three people per family who have directly, who have directly benefited from Echo Kenya donation and food drive. We have also have the likes of young people where we engage them in work and different activities from the government. Presently we are working with KO to just engage young people to respond to the government funds. We're also working with the Youth Fund and Uwezo Fund, putting up 
forums where we teach the youths on the need of getting probably the loans and helping themselves. Yeah. And I'll say that it's, uh, it has been a huge number that has really benefited from ETCO Kenya for the short time that we have operated in Kibra. Okay, now, thank you. So we can have Isaac share with us maybe some of the challenges you face when you're carrying out your mission. Uh, that we are coming, uh, we, we came through. Uh, it was uh, like lack of water. Find uh, like in 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 the Madar Islam, there is water rationing. So sometimes you find that we have to go and source for water somewhere else. So that that was one of the challenge. And also, um, a lot of people were like uh, uh, not uh, like believing that there is COVID. So. Not everyone was welcoming the idea of uh, washing their hands, but um, I can say that um, um, we, we tried to convince them and uh, we got uh, people now uh, getting used to wash their hands. And lastly, the, ch the other challenge uh, we got is uh, because we're getting fundings from our partners and when, and, uh, when the fundings uh, end, it's very difficult to continue the project because um, uh, COVID is still there, and uh, actually now it's getting even worse. So, um, like, uh, that was also a big challenge to us, but uh, we're still happy to, uh, uh, to, the, uh, to continue, like, with our project because we still have some partners who are still on board. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Margaret, you can have you share with us some, some of the challenges. Okay. One of the major challenges that we have faced as Edco Kenya, it is lack of funds. Because as I, as I said earlier, I can't really point out this is the organization that has been funding us as Edco. It has been just young people from the community coming up together. And right now, due to the lockdown, I, we, the, the community is really looking up for us, out to us for solutions that probably we are looking forward that things might get better. If we get enough funds, I believe we can be able to serve a huge number in the community. The community has been very supportive, access to to, to activities and other things. We have really not have a problem with that. Even the police stations from our side, they've been very supportive. So I'll only say that funds has been a major issue as Edco Kenya. And lastly, we can have Asha share with us some of the challenges she's facing while taking her. Right. I think the biggest challenge, um, like um, my friend has said, is the the biggest challenge for us who like grassroots uh, organization, who are running grassroots organization, is that we don't have a big source of of, of, of financial support or like a sponsor. So sometimes, you know, things are not as stable as they should be. Like for us, we like we give out food when we have the money. We don't just give out food every single month. And um, yeah, for me, like, um, yeah, I'd say like the same, the, the lack of, you know, uh, stable partners and also, um, yeah, stable funding uh, to keep us going. Well, maybe you can share with us your long-term solution that will keep your program running. Um, I think uh, that the long-term solution for, for us uh, as the Kibra Food Drive is to look for more sustainable ways to, to keep the initiative rolling uh, because food is, is an eminent um, need. It's not like something that two people need today and then tomorrow they don't need it. It's something that will be continuous for the rest of our lives. And also, like, you know, COVID has affected people for the past two years. So, you know, for people to actually get back to normal, it will take them time. So for us, we're looking for stable partners. We're writing grants. We're looking for, you know, organizations that can partner and give us money. And also we want to start food banks uh, in Kibera to also make sure that in case of any pandemic or in case of uh, post-election violence or something, we can be able to continue to give people food. That's nice. That's good to hear. And Margaret, now we can have you share with us your long-term solution for ETCO. Yeah. Okay, our long-term solution for ETCO, we are looking forward to having a business a business plans, to execute business plans, on which we not only rely on people to drive out funds. 
but all we can get some few parts set up a business plan or execute one of the business plans that you've been having. I believe that from there, at least we can get a stable fund to help our people and work with our people. And lastly, we can have Isaac tell us or tell us, share with us his long-term solution for the Madari wants to keep. Isaac. Okay, I think we've lost him. Now, last but not least, we'll have Asha tell us, how were you able to build the aspect of social cohesion among residents to your initiative? So social co cohesion, I think it was, it was really easy. Uh, because if you look at Kibera, we we don't have like it's it's sort of those communities that people are very to, uh, like together and uh, we support each other in so many ways. So you know, coming together in terms of uh, tribes, religion, and other things, it was very easy to us to you know collaborate on uh, on things because Kibera is a um, like uh, yeah multicultural place. You have all the tribes, you have all the religions, you have. Yeah, or like people with different disabilities. You have like people coming from all walks of life. And uh, it was, I would say it was easy for us to build social cohesion. Um, and also like, you know, um, in my team, we had majority of us uh, because of also my background, majority of the team are Muslims, but we had like um, people from other religions on board. And it was easy for us to work together and also like understand each other, things like that. We had people in my team who came from different religions, different backgrounds and stuff. So it was easy for us to, you know, come together as a community. And that kind of translated how the community um, took us or like looked at us. Um, it was not that Asha, Jaff Asha Jaffer is Muslim, so she's giving out food. Um, it doesn't mean that, you know, when I'm giving out food, I'll not give uh, to my Christian or Indian or like, you know, um, other people from different denominations food. So it was very, yeah, I'd, I'd say it was easy for us to come together and work together. And I'd, I'd say like it's very beautiful because the COVID pandemic brought us together and uh, we kind of like created a unity, like, yeah, a unity force um, against it. Yeah. Okay, now we can. Uh, Margaret, tell us how you were able to be the aspect of social cohesion through your initiative. Okay, for us, it was easy for us because every member of VETCO is born and raised in this area. And uh, another thing, we are non-religious and non-political. And that is something we set up from the beginning. So everyone that saw or sees VETCO anywhere knows that it is not based on religious ground. Neither is it based on a political ground. It's about people from this area standing with their people. It's about our, us for our people. So it was really easy for us. And being the fact that everybody's raised from this area, it's just mingling with people that you've been all used to every day, every now and then, helping people that you understand their worst points and their best points, helping people that you understand their weakest point and their strong point. So I'll say that it was not a challenge from our side at all. Okay, now maybe lastly we can have Isaac take on how he was able to build the aspect of social cohesion through his initiative. Isaac. I think we lost Isaac. Thank you so much for the engaging conversation. We will go ahead and take some questions. If anyone has a question, let's see if they'll type. Okay, maybe can read some more examples. I trust my mom has been an interesting conversation. Nice work from you.
Atieno as the great initiative that saved many lives. Keep the spirit of supporting your community. Eli A. Kuyani, great job, Yasmin and team. Thank you. Lost Pep has written great work. Johnson Mwangangi, great conversation, amazing. Minyoso Kizumukuti, thumbs up to Asha for the food drive. Sugary Lab at One Stop is a great idea. Mugabe Were has said, this is an awesome conversation. Thumbs up to search for Common Ground Kenya and Guilt Experience. That's the end of our comments. And maybe lastly, we have someone asking, how can how can one help or contribute to your initiative? Aisha? Yes, um, I don't know. Can I share a link on the on the chat? People can they can see yes, that. Yes, they can. Thank you. Thank you, Larissa. Margaret. Margaret, how can one contribute to your initiative? I'll share probably our pay bill number and our contact on the page. Okay. On the conversation. Okay. So maybe I can ask one question. Maybe what's your plans with the cessation now? Asha. We to continue giving out food because now with the third wave, um life has gone back to where it was last year. I think the same same time, the same same week. Um, yeah. So it is just to keep giving out food because we, we are not expecting a miracle of people, you know, have already sought out ways they can get food during this um, this lockdown. Yeah, so for me, it's to continue everything I was doing last year, not to stop. Um, yeah, it's to continue also like being there for my community and continue spreading the word of, you know, how dangerous COVID is because the problem in the community is People are taking COVID as, as a joke, and I feel like, you know, it's high time it's taken serious. Okay, now, maybe Margaret, you can tell us what's your plan with the association. Okay, for me and my team, it's a matter of doing much better than what we did last year. It's a matter of more sensitizations, working together with the Ministry of Health, just helping people and making sure that we don't lose everyone in the community just putting more effort in the donations of masks, food and non-food donations, and also most probably and most important is sensitization on masks and keeping safe. Thank you. Okay. Maybe I... Isaac, are you back? Sorry. There's a challenge with the, with the internet. Oh, it's okay. No problem. So maybe I'll have two last questions for you and then we wrap it up. Maybe you can tell okay. us your know, long-term solution in keeping the program running. Um, my long-term uh, solution is to to keep the stations um, um, and, uh, working because COVID, we are told COVID is here to stay. And also uh, make sure that uh, people understand uh, very well, they get the right information on how to, uh, to tackle these issues. And... Um, and also, like, uh, there are also some other challenges which have come out, out, out of this, this post-COVID. Uh, These are uh, mental uh, problems, like some of mental health. Some of the people now, like, uh, they are shocked. 
and uh, they need to be counseled and also like they need, they need people to take care of them. So uh, that's a, a, I think uh, uh, my long term solution. I would, I would like to continue. And maybe you can tell us how you are able to build the aspect of social cohesion among residents through your initiative. Um. A lot of uh, people in the in the community have, have welcomed, uh, uh, like they've embraced the, the 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 idea, and also some of the people they're also owning that uh, idea. Sometimes when the funds are uh, we don't have funds, they also keep on uh, making sure that they provide uh, water and make sure that people they are continuing to uh, to use um, um, to use uh, the hand washing stations. So the people are already have uh, embraced, and they are also like uh, owning, uh, uh, like the the the, the um, um, owning uh, the idea, and also making sure that uh, uh, in, even if there is no funds, uh, they are continuing to provide as little as they can. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, so I think my final thoughts is, um, yeah, thank you for having us um, in this discussion. Uh, we hope to continue, um, yeah, like with such great discussions. Also, like um, I've met uh, Maggie, who's actually like, you know, born um, in my own community that, you know, I look forward to working with in the future. Yeah, thank you very much for, for having us here. Yeah. I don't know, Maggie, Maggie, are you on? You can give us your final thoughts.
Asha, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Um, I don't know if the rest is still part of this or the. No. I'm not sure, but I think we can just now end it. Let me just wrap it up. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure to have you as part of the webinar. We are thankful to Search for Common Ground Kenya through funding from the European Union for trusting us to conduct this webinar session. Hashtag Pamoja Didi Corona, hashtag Baki Salama. Thank you so much, Asha, for having, for giving us your time. Thank you for Thank you to enriching discussion. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thanks again.